Hi, my name is Lexi and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be attempting my very first 24 hour readathon. <laughs> So you might notice that we are in a different place. That's because we are in my bedroom. I thought that this would be like the coziest and most comfortable place for me to attempt to pull an all-nighter, but I don't know, like I might have to move if my bed gets too tempting to sleep in. It's about to turn midnight, so I thought that I would really quickly go over my TBR and then kind of show you like where I'm going to be doing the 24 hour thon. So like I'll give you a mini tour of my room and then we can go get coffee and start with our very first book or with my very first book. Sorry, I know you're not actually here, but you know. All right, so let me go ahead and break down what I'm planning on reading. So I've got two graphic novels here. The first is The Tea Dragon Society and this is by Katie O'Neill. This was actually a gift from one of my best friends, Jade. It's just about these magical people who have pet baby dragons and tea leaves grow off of their pet baby dragons. It sounds really cute and I've heard amazing things about it, so I can't wait. The next one that I want to attempt to read is Night Lights and this is by Lorena Alvarez. This is about a little girl who every single night lights appear in her room and she plays with them and catches them and then in the morning she can bring them back to life through drawings. Next I've got quite a few middle grade because they're the shortest and I'm hoping that I can get through a couple of these. So the first one I have here is The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane and this is by Julia Nobel. I picked this up on a whim because the premise sounds amazing and the cover is to die for. This is about a girl whose father disappears and she's shipped off to this mysterious boarding school and she has reason to suspect that her father also went to the same exact boarding school. Once she's there she begins to find clues that show that there is a secret society at this boarding school as well. Next we've got The Lighthouse Between the Worlds and this is by Melanie Crowder. This is about a little boy who lives kind of on a lighthouse with his father. One day his father is sucked into the lighthouse. The little boy learns that there is actually a lighthouse guild that his father is a part of and that the lighthouse is a lighthouse essentially between worlds. So it has the ability to go in and out of worlds, almost like a portal. And he has to go and try to find his father and bring him back. The last middle grade here that I'm hoping to get to is Snow and Rose. This is by Emily Winfield Martin. I am mostly excited about this because of the aesthetics. I'm just going to be honest. I think that this book is beautiful. The illustrations in it alone are just, they are pure magic. So this is pretty straightforward. It's just a retelling of Snow White and Rose Red, the fairy tale. And I'm really excited. Not a lot of people talk about Rose Red. And finally, I've got two adults. Now, the first one that I have, I am so excited about, although I don't know how much I'm actually going to get through because it is a little bit bigger. And that is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. I read Nevernight and I fell in love with Nevernight. I've been wanting to read this book for quite a long time, but I just haven't had time to really pick it up. This is just the continuation of Nevernight though. If you're unfamiliar, it's about a girl named Mia and she goes to a school of assassins where she tries to learn to be the best of the best out of all the assassins. And then the last book is actually my first priority. So I think this is what I'm going to start with. And it is In an Absent Dream by Sean McGuire. I am so excited. This is the fourth book in the Wayward Children series, which is like my favorite series. This series is about children who go off to other worlds and then they come back. And when they come back, they are devastated because they wanna go back to their Narnia or Wonderland or Neverland, whatever. And so they end up going to this school and the school helps them learn to adjust to reality again. This is about the principal specifically and her journey. It takes place in the goblin market. And then I've decided that I think I'm gonna kind of like bounce around between books. So I do have some bookmarks, let me show you. So I ordered these off of an Etsy shop actually and I think they are the cutest things in the entire world. And there are these like little animal bookmarks. How cute are they? So we've got a rabbit, a fox, a dog, a bear, and like this little mouse. And then they all have cute little tassels. I just think it's like the cutest thing in the world. So I'm gonna use these like if I go back and forth between a couple of different books. Okay, and that is my TBR. So I'll go ahead and quickly show you like the setup, where I'm reading and everything, and then we will get ourselves a cup of coffee and start the readathon. Okay, well, welcome to my bedroom.
Okay, you guys, so for the first book, I think I'm going to read In an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. I am so excited to read this. I'm hoping that it doesn't take me too, too long and that the story is just like very fast paced, but all of the stories have been super fast paced, so I am excited. I have got my coffee and I'm hoping that it wakes me up because I didn't think that I'd be this tired. Normally, I stay awake until like 1 or 2 a.m. anyways. And yet here I am at like 12.20, exhausted and ready to call it quits. I would never last in the Hunger Games. Maybe I would, but not like the non-sleeping games. So not the, not the Hunger Games, but the Slumber Games. Okay, so let's start and see how I do with this readathon. Also, I have an ASMR room going just so that it like sets the atmosphere even more. The one I like is by the Guild of Ambience because they have like the coolest rooms. And this one is literally like a thunderstorm, but it also has like a fire crackling. I literally listen to this anytime I write or I like have to study something or when I'm stressed out and I wanna read. So I'm excited. and I'm honestly not tired like the cup of coffee really really helped me but I do want to get into like actual proper pajamas I don't know how late I'm gonna stay up I'd like to say that I'm not sleeping tonight but I might cave in an hour or 30 minutes I don't know I'm basically just doing this until I don't want to do this anymore and then I'll wake up early and like continue I have two masks that I'm going to do tonight the first one is is one that's like my holy grail mask and that's the blue tansy mask and this is by herbivore it's a resurfacing clarity mask and it genuinely just like clears out all of your pores and it definitely stings a little bit and then the last mask that i'm going to use is from glam glow and this is like their mud purifying mask and again this one kind of stings a little bit it is 4 14. i'm pretty close to finishing this actually i feel like as in invested as I am in this story, I'm not like getting as much because my brain is over it. This story, by the way, I'm just gonna say it. I think it's my favorite out of all of them. But yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep and I will talk to you in the morning. Bye. So it is 10.44 according to my cellular device. I ended up waking up around 8.30. So since I fell asleep around 4.45-ish, I got, I mean, I'm just calling it four hours. I basically got four hours of sleep. Am I tired? Yes. So I wanted to get up a little bit early and like read the rest of this, which I did. I read this from like eight until 10. So basically what I'm going to do now is go to Starbucks. I might pick up something to eat for breakfast and a coffee and then come back here and just keep reading. Okay, so I just got back from Starbucks. I got a latte and I got their egg white bites, which don't really like look as appetizing as I swear they are. I don't really wanna get like food in my book or anything like that. So I think what I'm going to do is actually try watching one episode of Buffy because I haven't watched Buffy yet once and I'm trying really hard to participate in the Slay-a-thon. So yeah, I think it's time to watch my very first episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yay, let's do it.
I'm blue. I should have been blue. <laughs> The aftermath of me being scared. Now I have to wash my bedspread. I'll do that later, I guess. Yeah, time to go clean everything up. It's funny because it's not even scary. So I've decided to just place down paper towels and try to soak out most of it and put books on top. And I've moved the party over to my smaller tray. Okay, so I just saw my very first episode of Buffy. Have a lot of thoughts. So first of all, um, I loved it so much. It reminds me a lot of Charmed actually, and the sense of humor like throughout the entire thing was just uh, so good. I really liked it a lot. I wasn't expecting some of the jump scares. Actually, Kat was the one who told me that some of it had like a bunch of jump scares and just to like prepare myself. But even with her warning, I spilled my coffee everywhere, which you saw. Aside from that, I will say, just like 10 out of 10, the first episode is so good. And I want to keep watching them. However, it's almost one. And I really, really, really wanted to try to read a lot today. So I think I'm gonna force myself to not watch any more today. So now I think I'm going to continue on with the readathon. Just because I wanna get like another book under my belt really quick, I think I am going to now read The Tea Dragon Society. So let's go ahead and read it now. Okay, so basically while reading this like book all about tea and dragons, I just decided that I really wanted to make myself like a cup of tea. So uh, let's go downstairs and make ourselves like a cup of tea. But also just wanted to show you my super casual outfit of the day. So we've got a baggy sweater. We've got a baggy shirt. We've got leggings, but also look at my socks. Can you, can we, can we zoom in on this? I'm, I'm my own cameraman, so the answer is yes. Look at, wow, I'm flexible. They're library socks. They say like when a book is due. My sister-in-law and my brother got them for me when I got my first librarian job. And I'm gonna be real, I'm obsessed. Okay, let's go make tea. pajamas once again so it is about 10 is it 10 it might actually just be 9 30 I don't know and I'm not even gonna bother checking I am still kind of working a little bit on my coffee so the goal is to finish this book by tonight and definitely finish the graphic novel the other graphic novel night lights I'd really like to just read half of the lighthouse guild because I don't think that I can do a lot in the next like three hours but I think that hopefully I can like power through some stuff so 
We'll see, I will update you and we'll find out exactly what I can read today. Hi everyone, it's the next day and I thought that I would just go ahead and do a super quick summary of all the books that I got to and didn't get to. So the first two books that unfortunately I did not have time to get to are The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane and God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. These are definitely on my top priority list for April and I'm just gonna be moving them right on over there. I don't think I have enough time to read them in the month of March, but if I do, I'll be getting to these because I really, really still wanna read them. Next on to the book that I did not finish but I got halfway through and that is The Lighthouse Between Worlds by Melanie Crowder. I was not expecting the twist that she put on this premise. I thought that this was going to have more of a fantastical element but Melanie Crowder actually has made this more into a sci-fi. She's added a lot of science behind the magic in this book, which I think is really interesting and would totally remind a lot of readers of A Wrinkle in Time. I'm only halfway through, but honestly, it's so fast paced and so interesting that I think I'm just gonna finish this by the end of this next week. So I can't wait because it's honestly so, so, so good. On to the next two books. So the first one that I ended up reading and loving was In an Absent Dream, and this is by Shauna McGuire. I loved this book. I love this book. I told myself that I wouldn't give any ratings during this wrap up because I wanted to have something to talk about for my actual end of the month wrap up. But you know what? This was a five out of five stars and it just needs to be said again and again and again. If you have not picked up this series, I highly recommend it. You don't need to read them in chronological order. Honestly, you could just start with this one. It was perfect. It was my favorite one so far, aside from the first book in the series, which is Every Heart a Doorway. This is also my favorite world so far, which is very surprising because I loved Down Among the Sticks and Bones, but I've just always had this weird fascination with the goblin market ever since I read the poem when I was very young. So it was so wonderful to see Sean McGuire's interpretation of that. Also, side note, this is not actually about the principal like I thought. This is about a character named Lundy, and I don't remember her from the first book, which, I mean, I feel like such a fake fan, so I have to go back and try to find out who Lundy is in the first book, Every Heart a Doorway, because I loved her in this book and in this world. Next, I read Snow and Rose, and I thought that this was perfect. This book was so charming and so whimsical. I feel like Emily did such a wonderful job. My favorite part of the entire book are Emily's illustrations. I thought that they were timeless and so perfect. I don't know. I, I don't know, it was perfect. The entire time I was reading this, I just felt like she had transported me into this magical little enchanted forest and I never wanted to leave. I was the girl who was like obsessed with fairy tales growing up. I love them. I used to read the really dark original fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm and then the super charming beautiful ones by Hans Christian Andersen every single night before I went to sleep and I know them very, very well. So going into this world, I already knew who Rose Red was was, and I already knew like a couple different versions of Snow White and I loved Emily's interpretation I loved how she kind of brought it to a new audience It definitely read like a classic fairy tale just in a slightly new twist and I really really loved it This is perfect for readers who love fairy tales and who love slower paced books So not that the pacing was off. It's just supposed to be a little bit more slow It's one of those books that you just want to curl up by a fire with a quilt and a cup of tea and take your time. I think this would be the perfect like bedtime story, like a chapter at night too, if you were a parent reading it to your child, because every single chapter feels like its own little mini fairy tale and there are all these amazing and intricate little unique details. Again, like I don't want to give too much away for this, so if you want like my rating and more details about the plot and stuff, tune into my wrap up. Also, watch me not post a wrap up now. <laughs> because that would be very on brand. And then finally, I have two graphic novels to share with you. The first one is Nightlights, and this is by Lorena Alvarez. I thought that her art style was so breathtaking. And I feel like if you buy graphic novels mostly for their art style, you're gonna wanna pick this up. Personally, I felt like it was a little bit rushed. I wish that she had taken her time with a couple different things and developed the conflict in it, like the main conflict a little bit more. But that's actually a compliment because that shows that I I was so invested in the story that I wanted her to make it longer. Like I didn't want to leave the world. I'll have more thoughts about it once I've like processed everything a little bit more, 
but I did really like reading this. And then the last one that I read was The Tea Dragon Society, and this is by Katie O'Neill, and I had so much fun reading this book. I don't know, it was perfect. It was really perfect. If you haven't picked this up, I highly recommend it. I don't know anybody who has rated this lower than like a five star. I just loved it so much. I love the character development. I love the cute little relationship dynamic in it. I thought it was charming and whimsical and beautiful and perfect. And the whole thing just felt like it was so full of magic and wonder and hope and love, all of the good things. There's nothing bad about this book. I just thought it was so, so cute and such a quiet, happy, relaxing read. So you guys, that is it for my wrap up. I had the most fun ever during this 24 hour readathon. I was actually shocked at how much I enjoyed it. It just made it feel like I was being more productive that I wasn't leaving the house. Although to be honest, I never leave the house. So it basically was just like a regular weekend for me. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. And until next time, please keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you later. Bye.